Hello again everyone, Edwin Lerner back once again. In this YouTube astrological segment, I'm going to be giving you my Leo May 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two. And yes, this does apply and pertain to the sun, moon, and ascendant. Anyway, people, first thing up is as far as May goes, Venus will be in Taurus from the 15th until the 31st. So the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. This could be about a very conservative uh, spending, perhaps to attain more uh, status, notoriety, and recognition. If you're unattached at this time, Leo, you might connect with a, a Taurus, Sun, Moon, or Ascendant person. It could be someone prominent in your career, someone that might be very beneficial. Uh, to your public image, your reputation, it could be an authority figure, somebody in some, uh, maybe someone in business. Uh, and also it could be about a time where you value uh, trustworthiness, persistence, patience, and perseverance uh, in matters with the dominant parent, which is often the father of uh, career related matters, maybe people that are prominent in your career. It could be people that are in a business. It could be with authority figures, anything that could be 10th house uh, related and also, too, I mean, this could also be about maybe making money in a Taurus career and um, could be something like doing work as a stockbroker or anything with finance, financial analyst or advisor, uh, could be architecture, uh, anything that could be Taurus related at this time. So anyway, well, the next thing up is, as far as May goes, uh, Mars will be in Gemini from the 1st until the 16th, so the 11th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. This could be about injecting a, a lot of energy and vitality into uh, Gemini aspirations and goals. It could be matters with communication, such as journalism or um, data communication, satellite communication, anything with dexterity, such as auto refrigeration mechanics. Uh, situations with friends and acquaintances may be more contentious and acrimonious than usual. It could be a lot of verbal battles with a lot of harsh witticisms. And also you might find yourself doing manifold uh, things for friends, for acquaintances and group related activities. And the danger with this is when you're talking about Gemini energy, it could be about scattering uh, energy and dissipating yourself through lack of an integrated uh, purpose and uh, so you just got to be careful that you're just not spreading yourself too thin for too many people it might detract you from doing things uh, for yourself or not being able to follow through on these uh, many very things that you're trying to do um, could also be about if you're unattached at this time Leo you might find yourself in a sexual liaison or interlude with a Gemini uh, sun, moon, or ascendant person, or one that embodies Gemini traits, and it could be uh, somebody that maybe maybe was a friend or an acquaintance, or somebody uh, that might be in some group club or organization, you may know, or someone you met through social networking or social media. You might also uh, find yourself becoming angry, uh, perhaps at, at some uh, mischievous or gossiping, overly talkative, loquacious. Garylus uh, could be a friend, acquaintance, somebody you met on social media, or someone in a group, club, or organization. So, um, anyway, next thing up. Well, Mars will be in Cancer as far as May goes from the 16th until the 31st, so the 12th house as well will be emphasized and highlighted at this time. You might find yourself uh, lamenting over past hurts and uh, it could uh, be connected with secret sorrows, yourself undoing even. It might be also or family battles and contentious situations, acrimonious situations with home or family members might be tied in with secret sorrows as well. And also you might find yourself having less vitality and energy uh, than usual or simply putting a lot of energy into cancerian related things in solitude and seclusion. It could be like doing laundry, cooking, home related projects. It could be doing some kind of renovation or anything that could be cancerian related. And also, this could also manifest in a lot of tenacious and clingy energy, trying to weed out, so to speak, hidden adversaries, or also perhaps even rescuing. A lot of action may be taken trying to rescue those 
that are less fortunate than yourself, such as the impoverished, the hungry, the oppressed, the homeless. And um, you now in some isolated cases, this could be about becoming angry at maybe maybe a cancer sun moon or ascendant that might be driving you figuratively crazy or one that embodies cancerian characteristics or even being angry at a cancerian type mental illness if you want to call it a mental illness uh, like compulsive wording or something that could at least be very close to it. you might want to look that up and you know verify that but anyway um the thing about it is too and, and also uh Another, uh, this could also be about, I mean, depleted energy might be due to maybe doing, maybe being dominated by family and home activities at this time. Next thing up, Jupiter will still be in Sagittarius, so the fifth house as well be emphasized and highlighted. Now, as I've talked about in previous videos, Jupiter can be rather paradoxical. It could be very strongly benign and benevolent, but could also have a tendency to enlarge and expand. And in a lot of cases, this might enlarge and expand rather foolhardy, over optimistic, over enthusiastic, being overly uh, reckless, exuberant regarding fifth house matters, such as matters pertaining to children, romance, even gambling, speculation. Uh, this could also be things too where uh, in the positive and this could be very fortuitous for sports gambling if you are somebody that does this and a lot of this of course could be dependent predicated on aspects this makes it a good aspect to uh, your natal venus might really uh, increase that uh, propensity for something positive and generating a good you know some something positive monetarily out of that if that's what you do and also this could manifest perhaps a lot of exuberance and enthusiasm in, uh, in Sagittarius like sports or hobbies or things of amusement such as horseback riding, archery, target practicing, playing darts, anything that could be Sagittarius uh, related. And also too, um, it could be again another way this could manifest a lot of hope and optimism through maybe injecting uh, religion, philosophy into matters with children and lovers at this time. It could be also very positive and auspicious for personal popularity just by being maybe expressing jocular, jovial qualities, being very positive, being that incorrigible optimist, so to speak. I kind of like the power of positive thinking. Next thing up. Well, Saturn will still be in Capricorn, so the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, one way this may manifest, this could be about a lot of restrictions and limitations, perhaps, in health-related matters, employment, service may be rendered. Uh, you might find yourself taking care of a sickly or debilitated aunt or uncle. Um, it could be or someone prominent in your place of employment, your health life. Could be something Capricorn related, such as something with the knees, the bones, or the joints, and might be making you feel somewhat despondent and uh, melancholy. Could also be about taking serious responsibilities to your health. It could be matters also with an aunt and uncle to service rendered, and um, also to um, and also to your employment as well. Now, um, you might, I mean, this could be about health restrictions or difficulties with your health, and especially if it's making an inconjunct aspect to your ascendant at this time. And again, it could be something Capricorn, Saturn related, such as some with the knees, the bones, or the joints uh, at this time. And also, too, I mean, and it could also cause certain worry given that this is in the, uh, the sixth house, which can be associated with worry. But you might find yourself getting involved in some kind of Saturn type of employment, such as something maybe with dentistry or something with, with business or some kind of management or some kind of government related work at this time. Next thing up. Well, Uranus will still be in Taurus, so the 10th house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now, at this time, you might find yourself dealing with perhaps rather unusual or stubborn, obstinate behavior, perhaps from the dominant parent, which is often the father, people prominent in your career, your public image, your reputation, um, business people at this time, could be older people. You might find yourself also involved maybe in a Uranus-like uh, career at this time, such as something with aerospace, astronomy, even rocket science, uh, something with astrology or electronics or computers or even innovation. 
at this time and you might have a lot of fluctuations and ups and downs and a lot in your as far as your reputation and public image goes uh, at this time and also uh, another way this could manifest it could be about getting a reputation for being an innovator or humanitarian and also Taurus friends uh, they could be Taurus Sun Moon or Ascendant people or simply ones that embody Taurus characteristics might figure more prominently in your success, your career, your public image, reputation, attaining notoriety and recognition. And um, at this time, and a lot of it, whether it's beneficial or more to your detriment, can be predicated and dependent on whether it makes you know, positive adverse aspects and adverse aspect to Saturn, for example, could be more, maybe it could be to your detriment and causing some kind of sorrow and despondency at this time. Hold on a moment, people. Well, next thing up is Neptune will be in Pisces uh, still, so the eighth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted. Now at this time, well, eighth house matters in general may be more uh, nebulous and unclear than usual. It could be matters with an uh, intimate or sexual relationship. It could be something with shared resources. It could also be about dealing with a lot of deception and duplicity. Eight with eighth house matters, it could be matters over maybe an insurance claim or, or maybe uh, something uh, with a, someone you're in a sexual or intimate relationship with could also be about, I mean, in some cases it could be where you're more susceptible to credit card fraud at this time. So just be a little bit careful and where, and, you know, more wary about things uh, connected with that. Leo, if you're getting a call in the middle of the night, somebody inquiring from your bank or something saying they need to verify your credit card information, just, you know, uh, exercise a lot of prudence and caution. It could also, um, in some cases, this might manifest in a Neptune type surgery. It could be something connected with the feet, the toes uh, at this time. And also, you might be dealing with some kind of a spiritual, metaphysical, which includes astrology, transformation, or even something with detox at this time. You may be dealing with confounding issues connected with taxes, insurance at this time uh, as well. So. Um, Anyway, and um, those are some ways that this may manifest. It could also be about doing a lot of self-sacrificing in matters with shared resources uh, at this time. Remember that Neptune energy can be somewhat lethargic and relaxed. And so you might feel like at this time, it might be a little harder to do eighth house related things, especially if this is making, um, and say, an adverse aspect to your uh, to your natal ascendant, your sun, or your Mars, You're, you might feel more like kind of fantasizing and doing in daydreaming and, and not really taking action as much on uh, and, and really not have that energy to do a lot of eighth house matters at this time. So anyway, last but not least, Pluto will still be in Capricorn. So the sixth house is what will be emphasized and highlighted now at this time. You know, a lot of you don't want me to say the dreaded D word, but you know, I'm going to anyway. In some cases, this may manifest in an actual or literal death. It could be of an aunt and uncle, or it could even be a pet in some cases. It could be somebody that was prominent in your employment or maybe health and fitness, such as somebody that you may know at a place you work out regularly. Uh, and also, too, uh, you might find yourself in, embroiled in maybe power struggles, uh, perhaps at your place of employment at this time, maybe people in your daily routine, and really at this time as well, um, you could really, it, it could be a transformation of health. I mean, it could be a time where you might start working out vigorously to improve your, your body, um, how you are as far as your health goes, if I'm not mistaken, I started working out pretty heavy. I mean, when, uh, when I had this actual transit in, uh, in, in my chart. Uh, so the thing about this too is this could be something too where you might get involved in some kind of Pluto employment, such as something with insurance, recycling, uh, rebuilding the occult supernatural surgery, astrology, doing something connected with the death profession, such as working as maybe a coroner or a mortician uh, at this time. So 
Anyway, it could also manifest in some kind of Pluto health related issue, something with the reproductive or sexual organs uh, at this time, or even at this time, this possible you might uh, be involved in maybe with knee replacement, um, something with a knee replacement issue at this time, because remember Capricorn can be connected with the knees and, and Pluto is about transformation and you're talking about the sixth house of health and also guard against manipulative behavior in six house related matters such as employment or even service rendered saying such as uh, well I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go do this for you or run this errand for you if you don't do such and such for me so anyway people that'll conclude this YouTube astrological segment for my Leo May 2019 horoscope forecast part two of two and stay tuned next time where I'll be giving you my Virgo May 2019 horoscope forecast part one of two. Two things I want to get with you on before I head out. Firstly, the stars may impel but do not compel. And secondly, never isolate any single astrological element, aspect, planetary placement, position, configuration, influence, or what have you, and make an analysis of a person, astrologically speaking, based on this alone. Because astrologically speaking, the person is the sum of all their components in their natal chart and not just one. Till next time people, stay well.